Have you guys ever wondered what it's like to live in a dorm? Watch this video to find out. This is gonna be epic. Uh, what? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> okay. All right, things that you need to know about college slash dorm life. Kind of wanted to talk a little bit about both living in a dorm, but also just like college life in general. So let's start with living on your own. So probably what's gonna happen, because this happened to me and I asked a few friends, this happened to them too. When you first get to college and you know, your parents leave and you're just chilling in your room, you're gonna be like, whoa, like I'm living on my own now. This is so weird. And it is weird, it is, it's pretty crazy. And I, I don't know really what it is. It's like this moment of surrealness that I just know that me and my friends have all had this experience and I've seen other people experience this too. So that's gonna happen. But it happens because it's really different living on your own and just like living in a space that your parents aren't there because you know, we grow up until we're 18 usually, living with our parents. And you know, the transition from high school to college really changes a lot about that situation. One thing that you should know about living on your own is that you should not bring a ton of stuff to college. Bring your essentials, you know? Make sure you have enough clothes, make sure you have proper, wear for the weather so here in Oregon you're gonna need a rain jacket or an umbrella or something and also you probably don't need summer clothes here in Oregon and just in general don't bring all of your clothes I feel like that kind of goes without saying but like bring like a good two three weeks worth of clothes so you have good variety and you won't get bored all the time and then even when you go home back to where your parents are you can like switch stuff like oh I'm gonna leave this, these clothes at home and I'm gonna bring more of these clothes so we have more variety. Just also, you're gonna have limited space so you don't have a lot of space. That's the main thing about living on your own. All right, second thing, living in a dorm specifically. So most colleges like the University of Oregon require that freshmen live on campus in a dorm their first year of college. What is that? Do you guys hear that? Oh, I was interrupting the video. Anyways, so one thing about living in a dorm is you'll usually have a lounge and they have a lot of spaces similar to this where you can do studying or other various things just like socializing, hanging out with friends. In the lounge right here, there's a piano, there's a TV, there's a microwave, um, there's a bunch of couches, and a few tables and they have like three different lounges downstairs. So there's lots of places to just like hang out, be alone, you know, whatever you need to do. But most dorms are going to have dorm events. So for example, last week, um, my dorm had this trivia night event. You know, it's kind of like weird. I never really go to that stuff. But the thing is, I recommend that you go to those events. And the reason why is because Nobody goes to those events. Most of the time there's like two people, maybe one person, sometimes zero apparently. I was just talking with my RA. And so that event I actually attended just cause I was like a little bored and I had some time. She had her trivia game and nobody came except for her, like her own friends, like her other RA friends. And then so I ended up, she just gave me like this candy bar that was supposed to be a prize you know, for someone who's good at trivia. Obviously nobody's really that good at trivia, um, except for you trivia people out there. You guys are sneaky. You guys know so many things, jeez. So go to the dorm events, your RAs will love you. Get to be good friends with your RAs, do that. All right, number three, living with a roommate. Living with a roommate is kind of weird and it's different, it's new, for most people, anyway. Um, you have to learn to live with someone. You're probably not gonna be one of your friends unless you came here with a high school friend and you're rooming with them. Um, 
So you're probably gonna be rooming with someone that you have no idea who they are. You need to learn to live with them. Um, two, generally, just like have good hygiene. Just keep yourselves clean so they're not, you're not smelling up the room. Um, make sure you communicate clearly. You know, if you go to bed at 10 o'clock and your roommate's like a night owl, they getting their stuff done at like 1 a.m. Like you need to tell them, yo, like turn that bright ceiling light off, like use your lamp, you know? This is sort of something that I do because I, I go to bed at 10 um, and this doesn't really happen all the time. My roommate usually goes to sleep around the same time as me, but if he doesn't, then he usually uses his lamp light, which is cool. So make sure you talk to them. Also, generally, this is a big thing also. If you wanna be a good roommate, there's this thing called headphones. You probably have a pair already or earbuds. Um, use them all the time. Never watch videos without headphones. Yeah, your roommate will, they will appreciate that, hopefully. They might not appreciate that, but they won't appreciate it if you don't use your headphones. That's what I'm saying. If your roommate's watching videos without headphones, one of the most annoying things I'm, I'm actually a little bit guilty of this. I was watching a video this morning without headphones. I feel ashamed, but don't be like that. I will stop being like that too. Anyways, next thing. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is food. And this is pretty University of Oregon exclusive. So if you're not planning on being in University of Oregon or you just don't care, then you can just skip to the next thing. But basically, there are a variety of choices of meal plans, right? There's a deluxe plan, there's a standard meal plan, there's a select meal plan, there's a mini plan, and then there's also this thing called Carson Unlimited. Most people will tell you to not get the Carson meal plan because if you get the Carson meal plan, then you can only eat at Carson Dining and you can't eat anywhere else. You also can't switch your plan. Um, basically, the Carson meal plan is you just eat at Carson Dining as much as you want, but that's the only place you can eat. All the other plans are based on a point system. The deluxe meal plan, you get like 90 or so points every week, and you know, maybe a sandwich is like three points. Um, drinks usually sometimes three points, but let me tell you, if you're trying to save money, I would go for the Carson meal plan because it is the cheapest. A lot of people are also gonna tell you, Carson meal plan, they have unhealthy food, it's just a bunch of junk food, and the food, you're gonna get tired of it, it doesn't even taste that good. I will mostly agree with that. However, I feel like those people are a little bit lazy, and you can still make your meals interesting. Carson usually isn't really good about making healthy food that also tastes good, so you have to be a little bit creative, right? They have their salads, you have to put it together yourself, you have to get good at making your own salad. Second, just in general, sometimes you have to put your plate together. They're not gonna do it for you, right? It is a buffet style, so you're, you're gonna have to like put the food on your plate that you want, but like what I'm saying is like the dish that you want. So there's this one time where I literally had to put all the ingredients together of the meal that I wanted. They had pasta, it was just plain pasta, and then they had pasta sauces, right? Most people, they're just gonna have the pasta and then grab maybe one pasta sauce, maybe two. They're feeling like a little uh, jazzed. But what they didn't think about is with their chicken, because they, they were also serving chicken. Um, you, what I, this is what I did. I got the pasta, the pasta sauce. I sliced up a bunch of chicken bits, put it into the pasta. And then I also sliced up some tomatoes. Yes, it takes some work, but you gotta be creative about making your food taste good. And that is the secret to eating at Carson Dining. I could make a whole video about the Carson meal plan and why I like it so much, but maybe another day. Anyways, next thing you need to keep up with your schoolwork. Um, this is a little bit different for most people. Um, some colleges will have an honors college that you can attend and there's a little bit more workload for that. For me, my schedule 
is pretty minimal. It's actually a lot easier than the schoolwork schedule that I had in high school. So it's just pretty basic. Keep up with your schoolwork, make sure you're getting good grades. Don't slack. If you're hanging out with your friends too much, make sure you get your schoolwork done and then hang out with your friends. That's how the successful people do it. That's how you should do it. Anyway, next thing. Next thing is just time management in general, and this kind of goes along with schoolwork. You have to learn, if you haven't already, how to manage your time so you can balance all the things that you're doing. You know, I have schoolwork that I need to do. Me personally, I want to make YouTube videos all the time. I gotta get my morning workout in every day. You know, how do I fit my meals in with my school schedule? You have to plan these things out. For me, one thing that I would definitely recommend for you guys, and I don't know why I've never done this before, but I started tracking and planning my days in a calendar app. Um, there's so many apps you can use to like schedule your time, but Google Calendar is the one that I use. It's just easy, you can just put in events there. Um, and also some people like to do planners. Um, I've been really liking doing the calendar app because um, I've done planners before, but I think I was just like scared to switch to something new. You just have to start adding stuff to your calendar. And it's also pretty easy to add my school schedule into my calendar because you can add like, oh, this thing happens every week. And so it'll just like pre put that into every single week. And so you don't have to put it in every week. So that makes things a little bit easier in the calendar app. Um, but time management is a pretty important skill that you really need to learn about, or that was weird. You just basically need to learn how to, can't, you need to learn how to manage your time, okay? If, if you wanna get the stuff that you wanna get done, done, you plan out your time. And then so, on the weekends, you can hang out with friends, you have your free time. That's like another thing. Getting stuff done doesn't necessarily mean you have less time to socialize. I feel like it makes your socializing time better because you feel less stressed while doing so. Anyways, next thing, getting into a routine. And this is, I don't know, maybe some people like a lot of variety, but this helps me out a lot with grounding myself and my work and basically getting the stuff done that I want to all the time. I'll probably make a whole video on this eventually. On certain days, there's like certain times that I get things done. You want to be able to figure out and like expect what you're going to do during the day. It makes things easier so you don't have to think about like, how am I going to make this day productive? Rather, it just happens. You already know how to make your day a productive day. And so it's just easy. It almost like becomes a habit to go through your routine and make it a productive day. So I really recommend that you make some sort of routine and you try and follow it every day or you know your weekly routines of like when you get stuff done, when you do homework or when you practice, stuff like that. Anyways, next thing. So this is actually something I was never expecting I would have trouble with. When I first got to college, I didn't really have friends here. I had like a few friends from high school, but you know, I don't really see them uh, because our schedules and you know, school stuff is so different. I'm just never gonna see them. So I actually got kind of lonely in the beginning of the year. I had a hard time making new friends. It is kind of hard. If you want to make new friends when you first get to college, you just have to put yourself out there. And it's hard, but if you're just sincere with people, then people will start to see that in you and become friends. I would also recommend that in general, in the beginning of your college year, you be very, very friendly and try to make good friends just try to be the friendliest person in the beginning because people are gonna settle in with their friends and then they're not gonna wanna meet new people and make new friends later or like a few months into school. So make sure you make friends in the beginning of the year. 
because after that people usually settle in. Okay, I think that's, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Thank you guys for watching the video. Let me know if you have any other questions that are college related. I'd love to make more college related videos. I know some of my viewers are still in high school, so they're still curious. I do have some video ideas about college that I'm going to make in the future. I already have those planned out, but if you have more ideas, just let me know down in the comments below what you guys want to know about college, what you're curious about my college experience, and I can let you know. If you guys like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. I hope to see you guys in the next one.